I believe 99% of people know how they <laughs> should behave to become the person they want to become. They know they probably shouldn't have that, I don't know, bowl of ice cream at 2 a.m. in the morning. Right. They know that they probably should get up in the morning and run for five kilometers. They know they probably should check in with their friends and family. They probably, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but here's the thing. You're not making your behavior decisions with your brain. You're making them with the sensation in your body. If you don't feel like doing it, you don't do it. See, before it even gets up here, you feel it in here. And this was the thing that was revelatory for me. It's like, oh my God, like my emotions drive my entire life. And that's why I feel out of control. And that's why I'm frustrated with myself. And that's why I can talk till I'm blue in the face about what I need to do and what I should do and what this and what that. But when push comes to shove, if I don't feel like doing it or I'm scared or I'm this or I'm that, I don't do it. That means my emotions and the sensations in my body and the patterns that have been hardwired for a long time and the coping mechanisms that just run on autopilot, that's what's driving you. It's not up here. So we've broken our cycle. No, Who has? We well, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> dude, I wake up every, I still, I know all this. And this is the other, like, I think is a really important thing for you to hear. Not you, Stephen, but everybody watching and listening to us. And that is, that I, th I personally feel like it's important to understand that you may never like the things you need to do and you can still do them. Like I, I, I will never like getting out of bed hmm. and I still get out of bed when the alarm rings. I don't like emptying the dishwasher and I still do it. I don't like exercising. I still do it. I don't like eating healthy a lot of the times. I still do it. I don't like taking a breath and centering myself. When I really want to just scream at my husband and I still do it because I let my emotions and my anxiety and my trauma responses and my fears run my life for far too long. And I would rather be in the daily I don't know if you call it a battle or you just call it, I'm just in a daily dance with myself to constantly come back to alignment and peace and showing up as the kind of person that I want to be rather than how I may feel in the moment. So what you think about yourself then drives the things that you do. Is it thought-driven or behavior-driven? Is it nervous system-driven first? Is it subconscious-driven first? Here's what I know. I know that until you make a decision that you no longer want to feel how you feel or you no longer want to think the way that you think or you no longer want to have the kind of results or no results that you have, until you make that decision that, you know what, I know I don't feel great. I know I doubt myself. I know I've had a lot of bad things happen. I know there's a lot that I regret, but damn it, with the time that I have left in my life, I really want to start to enjoy myself. I want to take better care of myself. I want to feel happy. You don't even have to believe you deserve it yet. You can just want it. You've got to start there. You've got to start with wanting something better for yourself. And then I personally think the most important thing is to start acting like the person who has the things that you want right now even though you don't feel like it. And the reason why I personally prefer to hack this change of going, okay, I want to, um, like here's, here's something that I am working on right now. So I'm 55 years old. I'm in the middle of menopause. It's a complete nightmare. And uh, I feel as out of control with my body as I did when I was pregnant with one of our three kids. Like everything's changing. It's really confusing to figure out what's going on. The um, I could go on and on and on about this as, as somebody who's in the middle of it trying to figure out what to do around my changing hormones and how to get better control of my health. And so what do I do? I feel a little discouraged right now. I don't really know what to do. I just know I don't like how my body is feeling and how it's changing. And so I make a decision and a commitment to myself that I want to feel better. I want to understand this. And so that decision is super important because without deciding that I want to do something, I'm not doing anything. And then I start to study 
all of the experts and what people have to say about this topic of hormone balance and gut health and women's health and how to uh, regulate your hormones naturally and what to, like, there's just so much information out there. And then I make a decision. Okay, well, what are the two or three things that I'm going to do? And then I start doing it. And I wake up every day and I do those things, even if I don't feel like it, even if my self-talk is pretty poor. And here's what happens over time for me personally is if I see myself taking actions consistent with somebody who exercises or somebody who is taking care of her hormone health or somebody who uh, is not drinking or somebody who is writing a book, if I see myself taking those actions, it changes the way that I look at myself. The action first approach is what I personally believe in because I think it works faster. Everybody that hears you saying that and everybody who sees people be disciplined in that way the illusion is that they're just profoundly motivated. Oh my God, no. No, I, I think motivation's garbage. I mean, I, um, and I always thought that was funny given that I was a motivational speaker for a long time. And here I think it's garbage. And the reason why I think motivation is garbage is because it's not there when you need it. And I don't rely on motivation. I do not expect to feel motivated. I do not expect to feel like doing things, and I make myself do them. That does not mean, by the way, that I have great willpower. That does not mean that I consider myself to be a disciplined person. That means that I understand the biology of how most human beings work. And the biology of how most human beings work is that you feel a sensation in your body. So let's just take an example like getting out of bed, okay? the You set the alarm the night before. I know you don't, but most normal human beings set the alarm the night before. And when the alarm goes off, you're going to get out of bed, right? I mean, that's how it's supposed to work because when you set the alarm the night before, you're setting it for a time where you're basically supposed to get up. So you are making a promise to your future self in the morning that you're going to get out of bed. Well, what happens? All kinds of things happen. You go to bed, the alarm rings, and the first thing that you feel is a sensation. And for me, the sensation that I always feel in my body is something that I would call, ugh. <laughs> I don't know if it's the cortisol. I, I don't know if it's partying. I don't know if it's menopause. I don't know if it's the fact that I have a fabulous bed and my husband's next to me and I don't want to get out of bed. I don't know if it's the fact that it, I live in Southern Vermont and it's freezing. Like, I don't know. But the first sensation is, ugh. Then perception. So sensation, perception, then feeling, then thought, then action. That is the biological chain of events that happens in a nanosecond. And I know that this is what's happening. So I have the feeling. I then have the perception happen, which is I look around. It's dark. Chris is next to me. I then have an emotion about it, overwhelm, frustration, like, you know, usually something negative. Then I have a thought, which is, I don't want to get out of bed. And that for years would trigger the action I would take. And what most of us, I certainly didn't understand that sensation, perception, feeling or emotion, thinking, and then action is the chain of events. That is how you're hardwired. This is how it works. Body keep, like, this is how it works. It wasn't until I understood that, holy cow, if I don't reverse the chain, my sensation, my perception, my emotions about things, and my thinking, all four or five of those things actually precede what action I take. And I'm not in control of what I'm doing. My emotions and my sensations and my trauma and like all of the stuff that has been running on like autopilot forever, that is controlling who Mel Robbins is. And at some point, if that's working for you, fantastic. If there's an area of your life that you're not happy in, then you got to reverse the order. Or, I guess, or and, you can go to therapy for months and months and months and do the work and slowly but surely you will change the way that you think, which also helps. But I find that understanding that that is the chain of events and for those of us that have any kind of childhood trauma, 
where sensation is the first thing that you feel that then triggers that whole pathway, or you have any kind of anxiety, again, sensation of the alarm that then triggers a whole pathway of action and reaction, this is one of the reasons why you feel out of control. It's because the sensation and the wiring in your body is actually triggering this chain reaction and you don't even realize it. It's why avoiding things or freezing has become your default response to everything because every sensation triggers the exact same thing, which leads to an action of avoidance. And the way around that is to flip that and start with making taking better actions regardless There's of how you feel. There's two ways around it. One is to work with a licensed therapist who can help you do the deeper work of understanding yourself and understanding your default thinking patterns and doing the work to challenge those assumptions and change the way that you think. That absolutely works if you will commit to the process of doing it. The second way, and you can do these together, certainly how I did it, is to look at your behaviors and understand that there is this chain of this, there is this order that happens in your body and reverse it. Take a behavior first approach. What, if, if you want to get in better shape, what does somebody do who is in the kind of shape that you want to be in? Ask yourself what the behavior is, because I'll tell you, the reason why you're not taking those behaviors is because this chain of events in your body from sensation to perception to feeling and emotion to thinking is constantly telling you, Meh, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. It's not going to work anyway. I'm going to eat that thing. Yeah, I'm going to eat that thing. I'll do it tomorrow. And you can reverse it. 